Up next, I continue in the series of picking my five favorite fragrances from a specific house. Today's house is a Tot Libre de Orange. Great house. Find out what my five favorites are coming up next. Welcome back everybody to Joel The Nose here from Osme Perfumery in Miami. And uh, let me turn my phone off. So, sorry about that. Uh, today's video is a continuation of the series that I've been doing, introducing you guys to a lot of different niche houses. Some, I'm starting out with ones that are a little bit, you know, less famous. I'll work my way up to those like Parfums de Marley, Montal, some of the, you know, really famous ones. But today's uh, topic is five favorites from a Tot Libre de Orange. And I'm gonna get right into this, and I actually have an honorable mention coming in, technically six, but I had to mention it because I really enjoyed it, and it's one of the newest ones from the house, and this is Ghost in the Sky. Ghost in the Sky from a Tot Libre de Orange. The reason why I really like this one, uh, it's one of my favorites to smell on a woman. I've actually bought this as a gift for a woman. This is extremely beautiful, kind of almost soapy smell. Uh, it goes into that kind of skin smell, but that soapiness, it's elegant, it's beautiful, it's very magnetic. And again, I love soapy fragrances. Um, and so when a Tot Liberté Orange takes on that skin soapy smell, I think they're absolutely one of the best in the entire business at doing it. So, Ghost in the Sky, one of the newest fragrances. That's my honorable mention. Next, I'm gonna go with my number five, and this is Rien. Rien, right here, you can see it. The reason why I picked this one, this is a beautiful incense fragrance. Uh, it just missed out on my top five incense fragrances that I did the other day, actually I did top three. This would have been most likely in the top five if I had done a top five list. It's just very bright. It is, as they describe it, almost like wearing a second skin. Very, again, sensual, kind of like the last one, Ghost in the Shell. This is a very sensual, sexy fragrance. And Rien, if you like incense, this is one that you gotta get your nose on. Really uh, one of the best ones out there, I think, for the incense category. And it's my number five from a Tot Liberté Orange. Next, I'm gonna go with, this one's kind of an outlier, number four. This is Roland Moray Un Amoret. So this is a collaboration with a, the designer, Roland Moray, and you can see the bottle there. I own this one. This is an interesting mix of um, iris and vanilla, neroli, that just all three of those notes are very prevalent. So if you like those notes, you gotta try this, but the note that really sticks out on this that makes this a truly uh, remarkable and different fragrance is the use of something called Akigala wood. Akigala wood is a distillation of patchouli. So it takes patchouli, distills it down even more, and it has an extremely uh, strong patchouli woody smell that's unlike any other wood that I've smelled, and I don't, to be honest with you, I can't remember off the top of my head another perfume that uses Akigala wood. I'm sure that obviously there are ones, but this one, wow, really, right when you smell it from the bottle, I'm gonna put it in the air, that Akigala wood just stands out. This is something that you're gonna put on your skin and it's gonna smell like nothing else that you own. I promise you, Un Amaret, collaboration with the fashion designer, Roland Moray. Check it out. Next. So, this is another one that's come out in the last you know, year and a half or year or so. This is you or someone like you. Uh, this is just a fun fragrance. This is like one, and this is my number three choice. I've described this before. This is like a mojito in a bottle. You get the mint, you get like crushed mint, you get fresh citrus, you get light. This is a great, probably should have been in my top beach or summer fragrances because it always is. This is a, a no-brainer for this time of year going spring into summer. It's just fun. It's a fragrance that's light, 
It's airy, it's crisp, just like a mojito, and it's got that kick, just like a, a, a well-crafted mojito with fresh mint, crushed, or you know, should I say, muddled uh, properly in the drink. And again, this is just a fun one. I think it's a great addition to any collection. It's not too serious, it's not too hard, it's worn very well for either men or women, and it's very versatile. It can wear it pretty much for any type of occasion. But it is more fun. I'd say it's more outdoorsy, more beach, more activity, uh, you know, like kind of athletic activity or something where you can be outside because it's just, again, fun fragrance. Next, coming in now, number two, and that is Exit the King. To me, this is, I think, an under the radar fragrance that came out in the last two or three years from a Tot Libre de Orange. This is, how else do I describe it, as a soapy metallic rose. I already mentioned, of course, Ghost in the Shell, which is an excellent kind of soapy skin smelling. This is a soapy metallic rose. Perfect description. I would not describe it any other way. If you like soapy fragrances, if you like rose fragrances, if you like metallic smelling fragrances, Exit the King is, it's just a pure winner. It lasts all day on your skin. It is great projection. It is, don't be scared away from the rose, absolutely very unisex. But I happen to again love how this smells on women, but I also love how it smells on me. And they, I tend to get a lot of compliments when I wear this fragrance. Again, just really high quality, exit the king. And I don't think it gets the love that it should. This is a fragrance to me that I think should be one of the best selling niche fragrances out there in the last few years because it's that good. It just doesn't, I think, get the love it deserves. Lastly, and this has always been, I think, probably my number one choice forever, and that is Tom of Finland. Look at that juice. I love that dark, rich, ambery color. And this screams, exudes hyper masculinity. You know anything about Tom of Finland? It was kind of, you know, this fictional character, uh, you know, that just was very extreme, extreme behavior, extreme. They have artwork that goes with this that's also kind of graphic. It actually borders on, I would say, pornographic. You know, take all that out of, of the equation, whether you like that or not, or offended by stuff like that. The fragrance is a pure winner. It is, again, hyper-masculine. When I wanna wear this, or when I wanna like make an impression for, for example, maybe a first date, or even maybe a business meeting, where you wanna come across powerful and maybe kind of gain the upper hand in a negotiation, this is one that's gonna make you feel like the alpha male in the room. This is pure alpha male fragrance. So if that is something that you don't have in your collection, or of course, you could use another one, or you've never smelled anything like it, you gotta do it again. So it's kind of a ambery, uh, just almost boozy, could be in the boozy category, just, again, one of my favorite kind of amber oriental fragrances on the market. And it's been my number one Etat Libre de Orange for, I don't know, at least probably going on about three years now. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. That is my top five Etat Libre de Orange. Let me know what your favorites are from the house. There's so many great ones. Easily could have been a lot more, but I had to narrow it down to, I guess, six. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. Peace love and perfumes.